Hey all, this is Stephen Golden again, and this is your pain-free body. Last week we learned Eiderolf's exercise for organizing the lower girdle. That exercise is essentially for the lower half of the body. It's amazing for any kind of pelvic pain, sacral or low back pain, tight hips, issues with your knees, ankles, tight hamstrings, plantar fasciitis, um, Achilles tendonitis, any of that stuff. Um, and it's just general, uh, really good for organizing the lower half of your body. So that exercise is part of a paired exercise, and today I'd like to teach you the second half of that exercise. It's Eiderwolf's exercise for organizing the shoulder girdle. Um, so let's go over a few things before we get started, and then I'll take you through the entire exercise so that you can do it at home with me. Um, so a few things. You're going to need a, a pair of shoes uh, or a pair of books or something small. Um, we'll use this as a tool to help uh, maintain our alignment. So when we're doing this exercise, you're going to keep your arm extended at all times. So make sure that you don't bend the elbow. Make sure you don't hyperextend the elbow either. Um, during the entire exercise, you want a sense of lengthening through your entire tissue, especially around your back and out your arms. Um, when another really important thing is to keep your fingers fully extended at all times, especially the space between the forefinger and the thumb. If you extend your arm and you notice that your hand has a tendency to bend toward the pinky side, this is called an ulnar deviation, if it's very strong, you're going to want to compensate a little bit, at least to the point where your forefinger or middle finger are in line with your arm. Um, but don't feel the need to compensate in the opposite direction. Anyways, let's get started. You're going to lay flat on your back with your knees bent about shoulder width width apart in a comfortable distance from your buttocks. So the first thing you're going to do, you're going to take your hands, reach down towards your feet, and then relax. And then as if your palm was nailed to the ground, you're going to take one of your elbows, for right now we'll do the right side, you're going to take your elbow out and in. And you're going to try to organize this movement from your elbow and your forearm, not from your shoulder. So get an idea, get a feeling of the quality of that movement. Does the shoulder really feel tied up with this movement or does the elbow move freely by itself? Now, extend the arms and open the hands and the fingers and lift the arms an inch off of the ground. Then bring your arms up to 90 degrees. Now this is why I have the shoes here. For yourself, you're going to want to get your devices and line up them so that you can maintain this perfect 90 degree angle and, and why that is will become evident in just a moment. So extending the arms, you're going to slowly and simultaneously lift them together. Now be very careful to maintain this angle with the thumbs pointing towards your face or towards your feet. When your arms become parallel, stop. From this angle, you're going to reach out through the shoulders, lifting the shoulders off of the ground and then slowly reach them back to the ground. Then very slowly allow your arms to fall towards your sides. Your arms keep extending as you do this exercise, and you're going to stop an inch before you hit the ground. Then, carefully rotating from the shoulder joint, not from the hands or the elbows, from the shoulder joint, you're going to rotate 90 degrees so that your thumbs point towards the ceiling. And then again, slowly, smoothly, simultaneously lift your arms towards each other. Be sure that the arms don't fall backwards, be sure the arms don't fall forwards, and be sure that they move at the same speed. When the arms become parallel, you'll stop, and then you'll slowly lower them back down towards the ground. You'll notice that I did not lift out of the shoulders. You only do that from one angle. Be sure to keep any tension out of the neck and the jaw. You can check with your peripheral vision and turn your head to see that you're still aligned with your shoes. And then again, rotating from the shoulders, turning in 90 degrees so that your palms face the ceiling. Keep your fingers and your hands open. Keep extending from your back, your arms and your fingers. It's like your fingers keep growing and growing and growing. Stop when the arms become parallel and then slowly lower down. Are you breathing? Good. Keep breathing, keep relaxing the neck and the chin. Make sure that the chin doesn't jump forward, that it's a little tiny bit tucked. 
check to make sure that your arms are still aligned, stop before you hit the ground, and then one more time from the shoulder socket, rotate so that the pinky edge or the blade edge of your arm points towards the ceiling. This is the most challenging angle for many people, it certainly is for me. When you get to 90 degrees, stop, and then slowly lower towards the ground, trying to make this movement as smooth as possible. Good, stop an inch before you hit the ground, and then once again, or we're going to repeat this same angle. So again, leading with the blade edge of your hand, you're coming back up a second time. Stop when the hands are parallel, and then slowly and smoothly return them to the ground. Checking to make sure again that your arms aren't bobbing overhead or bending towards your feet. Stop one inch before the ground from the shoulders, rotate 90 degrees back in the opposite direction so your palms are facing the ceiling. Extend the arms out and slowly lift. Now you're welcome to go as fast as slow as you want. I wouldn't go much quicker than this. And if you have the time, you're welcome to go slow, more slowly. Just keep in mind that this isn't a calisthenic exercise. Good. When you reach the ground, rotate again from the shoulders so that the thumbs point towards the ceiling now. Reach out and lift. Make sure there's space in all of the fingers. Like stay extended. When you get to the 90, when the arms become parallel, stop. And then slowly lower them down. Be really careful that you maintain very exact angles in the arms and the hands as you do this exercise. And then one more rotation from the shoulders so that the palms face the ground. Lift the arms up slowly. Keep extending and relaxing at the same time. Stop when the arms become parallel. Now that we've returned to the original angle, we're going to reach out from the shoulders and then slowly lower the shoulders back down to the ground. Keep reaching as you lower. Don't lower all the way to the ground quite yet. Stop one inch before the ground. Keep extending. Then bring the arms back down towards the sides. When they're at your sides, then you can slowly relax your arms down. Relax. Take a breath or two. And reach the palms and the fingers again towards the feet. Relax, and with the same arm that you started with, imagine that palm is pinned to the ground, and then go back to the original organizing movement of elbow out and in. And notice that the quality is any different. And then roll on up. Good. That's Ida Rolf's exercise for organizing the shoulder girdle. Um, it's best if done as a pair with that other exercise, um, but it's okay if you want to split up the two. Anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, this is your pain-free body, and I'm Stephen Golden. Have a great day.